Hi, my name is Michael Novello. In this video course, I'm going to teach you how to program with Java. Before we get started with writing any actual code, I'm going to show you a little bit about how Java works and introduce you to a little bit of background stuff. Alright, so first of all, what is Java? Java was created back in the 1990s by a company named Sun Microsystems, which is now owned by Oracle and it was designed to be flexible enough so that your applications could run on all types of electronic devices. Uh, this is really important. The thing that sets Java apart from other major programming languages is that you can write your application just one time and then distribute it to people using all types of electronic devices and then they can run your application uh, without you having to create separate versions of your application for every platform that you want it to run on. So that's the platform independence of Java. Java is object oriented. Okay, uh, this is this is a really important concept. It's revolutionary, really. Uh, the older languages are not object oriented. Modern languages tend to be more object oriented, and Java, in particular, is purely object-oriented, so there's no getting around object-oriented aspects of Java. Uh, basically what object-oriented means is that you will be it's, it's a shift in the paradigm of how you think about the, the code that goes into your application, how you actually organize and lay out the code that goes into your application. You create what you do is you create objects and then you define the attributes of those objects and how those objects interact with each other. So everything is a bunch of self-contained or encapsulated objects that uh, interact with each other and that's basically what a Java application is. And if you're confused, don't worry because we'll be getting into some object-oriented concepts later on and it'll all make more sense. Personally it took me a while to uh, understand object-oriented programming but Hopefully, with this, with with my course, you know, uh, it won't take you as long. So, uh, Java is very popular today. It's running on literally billions of electronic devices worldwide. Devices ranging in variety from cell phones to laptops to ATM machines to car navigation systems. It's even being used by NASA for some space-related applications. So, pretty exciting stuff. There are over 9 million application developers worldwide that are using Java. Uh, this is exciting for us. This is good news for us because it means that, uh, well, first of all, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, jobs, a lot of work out there available to, to Java developers. But also, and perhaps more importantly, it means that there's a lot of support. If we run into any issues with our code or there's something we don't quite understand or we need help with something there's a, a whole lot of other developers out there who can help us along and help us uh, work out the kinks in our applications so moving on to the next slide here we've got the development cycle alright this is sort of a uh, simplified version of the development cycle which is the process that you would go through when you're developing a Java application. To begin with here on the left, you need to design your application before you actually begin writing any code. <clears throat> this is very important. The more time that you spend designing your application, figuring out uh, the databases, the processes, the interfaces, uh, all of the stuff that, go, that, will be, that will constitute your application, uh, the better off you'll be when you go in and actually write your code and develop your application. Uh, it's like building a house. If you get it right the first time, it's much easier than going in later and having to uh, remodel it or you know move a wall from here to there or you know uh, find find out that your your house is uh, fundamentally flawed in structure and have to read read. Re, uh, rebuild the entire foundation or anything like that. It'll save you a lot of time to design your application properly from the beginning. So, source code files, those are the files that you'll be writing uh, your Java in. Those are 
the actual files that contain your Java code and they have a .java file name extension so pretty self-explanatory right there right there you just use a plain text editor you write your Java code and you save it as a file with a .java file name extension that's your those are your source files you then take your source files and you compile them which means you translate them from human readable Java form to something a little bit more cryptic a little bit more compact that that a machine can understand and it's called bytecode bytecode is the version of your source code after it's been translated that uh, the Java virtual machine which we'll talk about later on the Java virtual machine is a little piece of software that can then take that your bytecode files your object files and then interpret interpret them and, and run them <clears throat> so any machine that has a Java virtual machine installed will be able to take your bytecode and understand it and all that so once you've got your bytecode you can run it using the Java virtual machine to check it for bugs and whatnot if it's got bugs you just go back and edit your source code a little more recompile it retest it and so on and so forth until you're um, relatively bug free no application is ever completely free of bugs but once you've you've uh, s fixed the critical bugs at least and you feel like your application is good enough for distribution then you go ahead and package your files up uh, either individually or you can if you've got a bunch of them you can put them together into a Java archive file which has a dot jar J -A -R extension and uh, that makes it a little easier for for uh, distribution. So the Java Virtual Machine, which I promised I would talk about here, is like a translation dictionary for your object files. Okay, so it takes your bytecode object files, as you can see here on the left, and I've represented it as a uh, software package of sorts. The Java Virtual Machine can take your object files and then translate them into machine code. Machine code is even more cryptic than bytecode, uh, but it's very specific to individual machines, whereas uh, bytecode in your object files, your bytecode is more abstract and a more general uh, set of instructions machine code is very specific to the machine that it's actually running on and so for all the various machines and devices out there all they need is a Java virtual machine which is just a little piece of software that will translate your more abstract bytecode into something that can be understood by the individual machine or physical device and operating system that is actually executing your application so when a new vendor say comes out and invents some new electronic device, some new tablet or new type of cell phone, all they've got to do is create another version of the Java virtual machine to translate bytecode for that part for their particular device. And then that device will be able to run anyone's anyone's object files that are that they want to have supported for that device. So uh, other machine, other uh, other high-end programming languages don't even have a Java virtual machine. There's just it's just a pretty straightforward process. You write your source code and then you compile it straight into machine code. There's no Java virtual machine in between. So what ends up happening is is with these other languages, you have to recompile your code or you know recompile another version of your code for every platform or device that you want type of device that you want to be able to run your application so say you if you have an application that you've uh, with one of these other languages that you've uh, designed uh, or compiled to run on Windows you then have to go and recompile it to run on the Mac uh, to run on this tablet to run on that tablet to run on this type of phone to you know whatever what have you uh, you have to keep uh, recompiling different versions of your code to run on different devices and traditionally that's been a little faster the trade-off is that when you compile your your uh, applications directly into machine code then those applications run faster on 
on those devices that the code's compiled for, but the the drawback is obviously portability because you, you without the Java virtual machine there's no uh, intermediary translator to uh, to handle that abstraction abstraction level there and I'm sorry if this is a, if it's a little confusing again it'll make more sense as we move along and actually uh, install the Java development kit and some of the stuff that we're going to be doing later on and when we actually start writing code and compiling and ever compiling it and everything it'll start to make more sense hopefully so that's it for this video lesson in the next one uh, as promised we'll actually get to write some code and start jumping in to that stuff and if you have any questions feel free to shoot me an email my email address is shown here at the bottom of the screen and I look forward to seeing you next time thank you